In this lecture, we will take a brief review of compound parabolic collectors, optical and thermal analysis. This is the sketch of compound parabolic collector with flat absorber. This has already been explained in the previous lecture, but I will briefly explain the same again. So a compound parabolic collector consists of two parabolic reflectors. So this is a left side parabolic reflector and then right side parabolic reflector. So it consists of two parabolic reflectors which are truncated. So the focus of this left parabolic reflector is here. And the focus of right side collector is right side reflector is here. And the line joining the extreme edge and this point and this point, the, this angle is called acceptance angle of the collector. And this theta A is the half acceptance angle of CPC. This is the axis of the CPC. And then this is length of the CPC. This is width of the CPC. This is height. And then concentration ratio in compound parabolic collectors is given by aperture area. So this is the aperture area by absorber area. So this is the absorber area. So aperture area is W into L. And then receiver area or absorber area is P into L. B is the width of the absorber. So L goes and the concentration ratio is W width of the aperture by width of the absorber which is also equal to 1 by sin theta A that is acceptance angle. This we have already derived in the last lecture. Now equation of the CPC parabola is this. So this parabola, if we want to generate the equation of this parabola is y equal to x square by 2b, b is the width of the absorber into bracket 1 plus sin theta i. So if you just plot this, I will show you how this can be plotted. This is a plot values and uh, these values are entered acceptance angle 2 theta i is taken as 18 degrees, half acceptance angle is taken as that will be 9. Then receiver width is taken as 75 millimeters. So equation of the curve. So this is the equation of the curve. So if we plot the equation, so we will get the profile on both sides like this. With this equation, you can draw the parabolas. Focal length f equal to 1 plus sin theta i b by 2. So this is the expression for evaluating the focal length. Then height to aperture ratio. So this is height to aperture. This ratio is given by this expression half into bracket 1 plus 1 by sin theta i into cos theta i. Then the ratio of surface area of the concentrator to the area of the aperture. So surface area of the concentrator, concentrator is a con by the aperture W into L is given by this expression. Okay, so sin theta A into bracket 1 plus sin theta A into square bracket cos theta A by sin square theta I plus natural log of the entire bracket here minus root 2 cos theta A 1 plus sin theta A raised to 3 by 2. So with this equation we can calculate the ratio of the concentrated area by Aperture. So for a value of concentration ratios greater than 3, instead of using this long or uh, large uh, expression, extended expression, expression, this short expression, simple expression can be used. So but remember, this is valid only for the concentration ratios greater than 3. So a com, a com by W equal to 1 plus C. Now average number of reflections M undergone. So what happens here now? 
if solar energy is incident on this surface, solar ray is incident on this surface, for example, it may have multiple reflections before falling on the absorber. So it may not have only one reflection, like, like sun ray is falling here on the surface and then second, its second strike will be on the absorber. No, it may have multiple reflections. So the number, it depends on the nature of the parabola again and the width. So the average number of reflections undergone by all radiation falling within the acceptance angle can be calculated. So this is before reaching the absorber surface. So it can be evaluated by using this expression m equal to 1 by 2 sin theta a into bracket a con by w. This ratio we already know a con by w minus 1 minus sin theta a into bracket 1 plus 2 sin theta a by 2 sin square theta a. So we can calculate m using this expression. In the above equation, the value of a con we can calculate using previous expression. So where to use this m? This m is used to calculate effective reflectivity of the concentrator surface, rho e. So rho e is equal to rho raised to m. So this m we have to substitute here. Where rho is, is reflectivity value for a single reflection. So effective reflectivity we can find out using this expression. Now tracking requirements of CPC. Before going for tracking requirements of CPC, let us understand the concept of solar elevation angle. For this, a sketch is drawn here. <coughs> so this sketch shows the horizontal. This is a ground we can say or a horizontal plane. This is a vertical plane. And at the end of the horizontal plane, there is a stick, vertical stick. So this is a stick and then sun ray, sun is here and sun ray is passing over this stick. Now when sun is incident on this stick, it casts the shadow like the shadow of the stick. So this is a stick and the shadow of the stick is this, it is shown in black color. So this is the shadow of the stick cast on a horizontal plane. Now, I can, I can resolve this shadow or I can project this shadow in horizontal as well as vertical plane. Now how to uh, find out the projection of this on a horizontal? This as the shadow itself is on horizontal, uh, falling itself on a horizontal plane, it is itself in horizontal. So the angle made by this shadow with, a, with some arbitrary direction, you can say south direction, this is alpha edge, we can say. So this is a projection of altitude angle. Now this this angle is altitude and we can say, see this angle is altitude angle. Okay, so this is altitude of so alpha. Now, projection of altitude angle on a horizontal plane is nothing but the uh, direction of the shadow. Okay, so this is projection of altitude angle on horizontal plane. So alpha h this. Now if, I, uh, if uh, we need to find out the vertical projection of this altitude angle on a vertical plane, then I need to extend this end of the shadow point, I connect on a vertical plane here and then the end of this stick here on a vertical plane. So if I carry these projections on a vertical plane and connect these lines, this alpha v, this is the solar elevation angle. Solar elevation angle, it is a projection of altitude angle on vertical plane. So I have to make it a vertical plane. So it is has to be on a, a vertical plane. Okay. So this is a projection of the altitude angle on a vertical plane. This is called solar elevation angle. So this concept of solar elevation angle is made use of uh, in the tracking requirements of CPC. Now here you can see a CPC collector which is oriented towards north-south. So this is the south direction, this is the north direction and then east direction you know, is on the back side and west direction is perpendicular to the, uh, this slide. Okay. So this is oriented, the CPC is oriented like this, the axis of the CPC is inclined. Uh, maybe at an angle of say beta or theta or whichever name you can give. So this is inclination of the 
axis with the horizontal so this is a this is a horizontal now sun is rising from the east and then it is setting in the west so this is a projection this is so sun at omega equal to 90 at the sun sunrise omega equal to 90 and then slowly sun moves it, it moves on this side and then it reaches at the afternoon uh, omega equal to 0 so this is the maximum height sun can reach so and again it goes down and then it sets at west again at, at west direction omega equal to 0 and this position is a, is a position indicated in, in between some or 0 to uh, 0 to 90. So over a day sun moves in this vertical trajectory twice. So in the morning sun moves from bottom to top it reaches the zenith and then again afternoon it goes down. So this is the trajectory of the sun in the vertical plane. Now our CPC is inclined towards the south. Sun is on this side. Now if we connect from this axis the axis is meeting the horizon here the cpc axis is meeting the horizon here from the same point if we join a line to the sun position then this angle is and then it's what and its projection on a vertical plane so this is a single vertical plane only. so this is alpha v1 okay at a certain position now at at afternoon omega equal to zero if we connect this line and find out this angle this is alpha v2 a solar elevation angle at the noon. So alpha v1 and alpha v2 are the solar elevation angles and we need to the tracking is like this the, the aperture will move like this. So it may be a continuous or it may be a periodical adjustment but in CPC uh, continuous tracking is as far as possible avoided. Periodic adjustment say for example adjustment once in a six months or once in a month is preferred. So, but that movement is in this direction. So, alpha v1 and alpha v2 are solar elevation angles. Now, suppose for example, this is a, this alpha v1 and alpha v2 are solar uh, uh, elevation angles and say this is the swing of the sun over a period of omega equal to some angle to omega equal to nd. So, this is an acceptance angle. So, this difference alpha v2 minus alpha v1 should at least be equal to the acceptance angle so that no adjustment of the aperture is needed over that day. So this is a requirement from the uh, difference in the elevation angles. Okay, So solar elevation angle depends on R angle omega, the declination angle del and latitude phi of the location. So these angles are evaluated on the basis of number of hours the aperture is expected. Now we can always we can calculate that when the sun for the sun to move from this position to this position how many hours before noon is needed suppose three and a half hours so three and a half hours before noon and then three and a half hours when sun moves down after noon so seven hours has to be at least equal to the acceptance angle the values of solar elevation angle alpha v can be calculated by this expression sine tan alpha v equal to sine phi sine del plus cos phi cos del cos omega by sin phi cos del cos omega minus cos phi sin del. Then at noon omega is equal to 0. So this in this expression if we substitute omega equal to 0 we will get tan alpha v equal to cos phi minus del by sin phi minus del that is cot phi minus del. So elevation angle at noon becomes pi by 2 minus pi minus 10. So the solar swing angle over a time period corresponding to an r angle plus omega t to minus omega t is a change in the elevation angle from the time corresponding to the angle plus minus omega t to solar. Thus the magnitude of solar swing angle is the difference between these two that is elevation angle at noon minus elevation angle at any time. Uh, the importance of this expression is we can say uh, we will first complete this. 
So if we subtract equation 10 from uh, equation 8 from 10, we will get this pi by 2 minus phi minus del minus tan inverse of sin phi sin del uh, plus cos phi cos del cos omega t now here and sin phi cos del cos omega t minus cos phi sin del. So the importance of this equation is to evaluate the solar swing angle. For example, suppose we want 8 hours of energy collection per day from a compound parabolic collector. Now 8 hours of energy collection per day indicates 4 hours before noon and 4 hours after noon. So the sun will start moving from the horizon. It will reach a certain position, say 8 o'clock in the morning. So 8 a.m. the position is here and then at 12 LAT, 12 uh, local apparent time, the sun's position will be here. So the difference between this, so 8, year, 8 hours is this difference. So we can say alpha v2 minus alpha v1, we want it to be 4 hours. So this angle, the difference in the elevation angle that is solar swing has to be at least equal to the acceptance angle. So with this expression, if we calculate the solar swing angle, so this solar swing angle has to be at least equal to the acceptance angle so that uh, with 8 hours of uh, uh, energy collection, the collector doesn't need any tracking adjustment. If this solar swing angle Say for example, it comes out to be 45 degrees and your aperture of the uh, compound parabolic trough collector is say 25 degrees. So aperture is 25 degrees and solar swing is 45 degrees. So, so sun is moving through a larger angle over a day. So we need to make some tracking adjustment. We need to track the sun once or twice in that day. So the, this, the expression indicated, indicates this fact. So sometimes it happens that uh, this, the, acceptance, uh, the acceptance angle is equated here theta a and then we find out how many hours of energy collection for the given acceptance angle is possible. So that is a, a more popular type of a calculation. For example, uh, ex because the design of a compound parabolic trough collector is fixed. So for example, acceptance angle of uh, a compound parabolic trough collector is say 32 degrees. So you equate 30, you substitute 32 degrees here, you know the location, you know the day number and then you know everything here, omega t will be unknown. So if you evaluate omega t, that omega t is suppose corresponding to 32 degrees of solar swing angle, it comes out to be say 3 and a half hours. So 3 and a half hours from morning to noon energy collection will be there and again another 3 and a half hours from noon to uh, evening energy collection. So total 7 hours of energy collection is indicated corresponding to 32 degrees of uh, acceptance angle for this CPC. So that's how the tracking adjustments are done by calculating solar swing angle. Now thermal performance, the flux absorbed, again the, the nomenclature is shown here, the flux absorbed S in watts is can be calculated using this expression IB we already know beam radiation intensity falling on a horizontal plane RB is the tilt factor for beam radiation ID is the diffuse radiation intensity C is the concentration ratio that is W by B and tau is the transmissivity of the cover and rho E is the effective reflectivity of the concentrator surface that is rho raised to M and alpha is the absorptivity of the absorber surface. So this is the absorptivity of the absorber surface. So with using this expression, we can calculate absorbed flux, which would be in watt per meter square. And then useful heat gain rate, we can calculate using this expression. FR is the collector heat removal factor. WL is the aperture. S is this. UL is the overall heat loss coefficient. C concentration ratio, TFI uh, temperature of the fluid entering the collector and TA is the ambient temperature. So with this we can calculate useful heat gain rate. It will be in watt. Okay. So FR we can, we can evaluate using this expression. In this expression 
M0 mass flow rate, CP specific heat of fluid flowing through the collector or flowing through the absorber tubes. B width of the CPC, UL overall heat loss coefficient, L is the length of the CPC, then F dash is the collector efficiency factor, B, U, L and L are known, M dot CP is already covered. So collector efficiency factor is evaluated using this expression, that is 1 by F dash is equal to UL 1 by UL plus B upon N pi di HF, here N is not known, N is the number of tubes in the absorber. So in this uh, sketch here, there are two tubes, so n equal to 2 here in this um, illustration. Di is the inner diameter of the absorber tube, hf is the convective heat transfer coefficient from fluid to the absorber tube wall. So with this we can calculate collector efficiency factor. Then the instantaneous collector efficiency can be evaluated using this expression, useful heat gain rate by the input, solar input. Solar input is uh, known by this IBRB plus IDRD, RD is the diffuse tilt factor which is 1 plus cos beta by 2 and into uh, this whole bracket multiplied by aperture area that is W into L. So that's how it is just uh, by knowing the values we can substitute these uh, parameters here and find out the values of uh, the effic efficiency of the CPC. Now this table shows the comparison of performance of flat plate collector, evacuated tube collector and compound parabolic collector. Okay, so this, this column shows the collector type and this is a performance equation. Now for flat plate collector, the performance equation is 0.73 minus 3.92 into bracket Tf minus Ta by It. So this is FR to alpha. This value is FR to alpha, which is a collector efficiency. So the first term here indicates the collector efficiency. And the second constant, it, it indicates FRUL, that is a collector loss coefficient. So TF is the fluid temperature, A is the ambient temperature, IT is the solar radiation on a tilted surface. So you can see if we compare all the values here, the maximum efficiency, maximum FR to alpha is obtained in flat plate collector. So among CPC and evacuated tube, uh, flat plate collector is the most efficient collector. Okay, because the absorber is a plate there, so the collection area is more probably here, but the loss coefficient also is higher, 3.92. In evacuated tube collector, the efficiency is 60%, stagnation efficiency is 60%, and loss coefficient is less than flat plate collector. Okay. And in CPC, the efficiency is less. Okay. And collector loss coefficient is moderate. Okay. So it is higher than the evacuated tube collector. Now here we have to operate as compared to flat plate collector, the efficiency of CPC is less, so which is not acceptable. But loss coefficient is less, but this reduction in the loss coefficient is marginal. Okay. But here, the in case of if we compare evacuated tube collector with CPC, Efficiency is a bit higher, but there is a remarkable decrease in the loss coefficient, the remarkable reduction in the loss coefficient in evacuated tube collector as compared to CPC. So when the situation of choosing a collector between evacuated tube and CPC comes, uh, obviously evacuated tube collector is a natural choice. And as long as efficiency is efficiency matters, flat plate collectors is the top choice. So with this, uh, we will go for one uh, illustrative problem. Uh, an untruncated CPC has a half acceptance angle of 36 degrees and an absorber width of 10 cm. We have to calculate the concentration ratio C, aperture A, height H and the surface area of the concentrator A con per meter length. So what is given? Half acceptance angles, theta, uh, angle theta A, 36 degrees and absorber width B is given. Concentration ratio we can find out using this expression 1 by sin theta a that comes out to be 1.7. Concentration ratio is 1.7. Concentration ratio can also be expressed in this, this form that w by d, w by b. In this b is given, so w we can evaluate as w equal to c into b that is concentration ratio into width 10 centimeter. Okay, so 10 into 1.7, 17 centimeter is the width of the 
CPC. Then height by width ratio is uh, calculated using this expression. So if you substitute all the values here, we'll get height uh, height of the collect compound parabolic collector to be 18.57 cm. Now surface area of the concentrated is just a matter of substituting the values in this expression. A con by WL need to be evaluated. Theta A is known. So this expression only involves theta I. So if you substitute the value of theta A, you will get A con as 0.3791 meters, meter square. So this is a concentrated area. So with this, uh, we will close the topic of CPC and then the topic to follow is optical and thermal analysis of cylindrical parabolic or sometimes it is said parabolic trough collectors which are most popular and most important type of concentrating collectors used in a commercial practice. Thank you.